Uh, good evening. Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Michał Woźniak, but for some reason people call me Ryszek. Or if they cannot pronounce Ryszek, they call me Rashik. That's, uh, that's a thing, apparently. I moved to uh, Bosnia and suddenly I became Rashik. <clears throat> But but okay, I can live with that. Isn't this a little bit too loud? It's okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So disclaimer, blah blah blah, etc. Uh, so question: Do we have any web developers on the in the in the audience? I'll try not to breathe into the microphone. Uh, do we have any web developers around? Anybody who's been working as a web developer? Uh, I I assume that everybody here would be. Kind of, sort of. Okay, whatever. Let's let's move on. So consider the following: uh, if you're setting up a uh, stack to develop the, to develop a website these days, this is what you do, right? You install Node.js, to install <laughs> Node Package Manager, to install Bower, so that you can install Grunt, which then does things, right? Of course, you're not gonna run all those things by yourself, right? These are four commands, there, there are many more. If you're doing Python, then you're probably doing some pip or whatever. If you're doing anything else, you're doing something else. So what you're going to do is you're going to put all of them in a make file, right? The fun part is that in the end, everything that they do could be accomplished by a make file, right? So th this, this I find a little bit disturbing. This I find a little bit, uh, what, what, is, what is going on here? Uh, why this is a problem? I'll, I'll get to that. So at some point I, I uh, made an adage that I'm, I'm using sometimes that if, it's, if something is technically possible, it's practically unavoidable, right? If uh, th that's, that's the whole idea about the internet, right? right? Let's make it decentralized so that censorship is not possible, right? Because if it's possible, somebody will find a way to do it, which is a different way of saying what could possibly go wrong, right? So remember this part, right? When you build all of this, and you have a nice stack of things that do, do things for you, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what could possibly go wrong, right? Now, to, uh, to have your uh, development environment set up on a server or whatever, you need all of this. And this does not contain a server, a DNS record, uh, I don't know, SSL certificate, et cetera, et cetera. Right? These are just the things related to what I just showed, right? System repositories have to be up, well, duh. But uh, npm.js has to be up, GitHub has to be up, packages not pulled from npm, uh, well, packages pulled from npm, ah, right, packages not be pulled from npm, bower, GitHub, etc. So let's say you're using a package, whatever, right? And then suddenly you find yourself, holy shit, I'm using this package. Can I swear here? Uh, I, I'm using this, I'm using this package and it's no longer available in bower, npm, whatever I'm using, right? What do I do? Well, mm, I'm kind of screwed. Uh, and then if you're using some external resources, if, you, if you're using some Google fonts or jQuery in JS on, on some server somewhere, you would rather have them up also, right? So you have a website that is working and then somebody takes something down, that's not good. So probably also not changed significantly, right? If you're using a particular version, if you're using just, I don't know, a name.js, then perhaps that version might change in a year or two, right? Well, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, Hopefully it's served via a secure connection so that nobody can do a man in the middle and inject shit into your website, right? Hopefully. And of course we trust them, right? There's nothing bad with that. We, sh we should definitely trust those guys because why, why, would we be, why, why, would, why would there be a problem? Well, who has heard about this? Who hasn't heard about this at all? So this is, this is an actual uh, note, uh, NPM module. It's 11 lines of code. It's literally just left padding, le not even padding, right? You cannot even say which side of the string will be padded. It just left pads a string. That's it, right? At some point, the developer of this particular module, um, well, he developed a lot of other uh, modules that are distributed via, via NPM. And at some point, a company called an NPM and said, guys, oh, well, by the way, NPM is a private company, right? It's not a community run something, it's a private company. So some, some other company called NPM and said, guys, there's a problem with one of the modules. Uh, the, the, the problem is that the name, you know, we have a trademark on this name. The trademark is for something completely different. It doesn't do anything with JS, whatever, but still, please remove this module from NPM. So NPM 
did that without consulting the, the author of the module. So what the author did said, okay, fuck you then. I'm pulling all of my modules from NPM, amongst others, this one, which broke half of the internet. Because half of the internet uses this module right now, because Babel uses this module. Babel is a thing to translate things and whatnot. So many people use Babel on their websites. So suddenly they're pulling a shit ton of dependencies that they have no control over. And then a guy gets annoyed with, with lawyer stuff and suddenly half of the internet is broken, right? Also, this is a thing, right? At some point you could have submitted a pull request to inject arbitrary JavaScript to Donald Trump's website because they were using a JavaScript file that is hosted directly on GitHub pages. So basically, if you submit a pull request, the author of this thing accepts your pull request, this automatically gets used on Donald Trump's website because they were using the resources from, uh, from outside. So it's, it's kind of like stacking stuff and hoping it will not fall. The thing is that that means that the internet is brittle. Right? This is not, this, these are not, uh, I mean, these are not words that you would assume you could hear in a single sentence, right? The internet is robust, the internet is decentralized, the internet is all those wonderful things. But unfortunately, because of how we're building websites these days, internet became very brittle, right? It, it became a very kind of uh, delicate construction of let's hope that this will not, uh, uh, this will not like fall over, right? So, uh, First part, keep your friends close and your resources closer. I mean, for me, this is kind of obvious, but I spent hours and hours and hours discussing this with, you know, true web developer. I'm a sysadmin, right? So I, discuss I, I spent hours upon hours discussing, uh, uh, talking about this with true web developers. And they're like, no, 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 this is how you do stuff, right? You install NPM, to, uh, Node to install N NPM, to install Bower, to install Grunt, so that Grunt can do things that basically a makefile can do. But with the added, pleasantries of if that, pa if that package is no longer there, you're screwed. So I'm going to say that, you know, I mean, for me, this is obvious, but hey, first of all, if you're using all of that, you're probably pinning versions of your requirements, right? Because if the version changes, if there is a huge, I don't know, structural change, suddenly your website will not work. So you prob probably are trying to avoid this, so you pin a version, and that means that you might as well just serve local copies. Why did I use a K here? Uh, <laughs> So, you might as well serve, serve local copies and not have this problem at all, right? You can still use, I don't know, whatever to download those copies automatically. You can make a, a make file or you can create whatever or use anything else, but just serve the local copies. Why wouldn't you, right? Ah, right, because it saves you bandwidth or hits or, or, or whatever, right? Because the JS files like jQuery or whatever are served from a CDN somewhere by some other company and not you. Well, that's a valid point as soon as you stop serving this three megabyte image that you're serving anyway, right? I get this all the time. I'm talking with a web developer and I'm asking, why do you want to use an external resource? We can just download this file, copy, put it in our repository and just not worry about it anymore, right? If we need to update it, it's, it's really simple, right? We, let's, let's just do that. No, 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 this will save us bandwidth. Oh, all like 200 kilobytes, that's cute, because we're serving five three megabyte JPEGs on our main site. So how does this work? What's the, like, I, I don't understand. Also, uh, usually these are served without cache, right? Which means, no, dear browser, please do not cache this because I want to serve this to you every time in case this three megabyte file changes, right? It's an image, I'm sure it will change, it will change a lot. <clears throat> Also, serving local versions of whatever font you're using, whatever CSS you're using, whatever JavaScript you're using, that means more privacy for your users. This is kind of big for me. It's not big for everybody, but I think it should be, uh, should be big, right? B because this means that some random J company from somewhere now doesn't know that random J user just visited your site, right? And any other site. Have you ever used uh, Lightbeam? an extension to Mozilla Firefox that shows you who knows where you've been. So suddenly those CDNs become the things in the center because they see all the traffic, right? You go here, you go there, and they see the requests with, uh, uh, with uh, the refer link set. So they know more than the actual websites that you visit 
maybe that's not the best of ideas. Now, if you want to get funky with this, there is a thing called GX, which, is, which brings the power of uh, IP file system to package management. If that doesn't make sense, uh, it probably doesn't, but, but bear with me. It's very experimental and very alpha. It has uh, versions for Go and JS. Basically, Go J uh, GX J JS has a similar functionality to, that, to NPM, at least on paper. But the idea is that the packages are addressed by hashes of the content. That means if you're using this link, if you're using this to download your package, this will not change. There is no way for this to change because if the file changes, the hash will change, and then you're hitting a different version, right? So, so this, is, this seems like a very interesting idea. This is not production ready, but this is something that people are working on. And IPFS is also an interesting uh, thing you might want to explore uh, because it's a nice decentralized uh, internet-based file system, as scary as it may seem. Uh, okay, let's, let's move on. So who, who can tell me what this is? It, indeed, this should show this should show the internet. This is probably from the 2000s or something, uh, and it's no longer valid because you know if you look at this map, a lot have changed. So if you look at the internet, uh, so for example, a couple of years down the line, internet looked like this, right? This was the map of internet for regular users. Can anybody guess what's the map for, of internet today? Now, let's, let's let this sink in. This, when I saw this, I started crying. Uh, so 9% of Facebook users in Nigeria said they do not use the internet. They don't believe they use the internet. Internet is something different from Facebook, of course, right? And this is, this is, this is, something, this is something that is problematic, right? Because if people don't know what they're using, they don't care about how it works. Right? So they don't care about how internet works. They, they care that Facebook works. Right? And suddenly all those, um, all those uh, warnings, you know, if you click this link, you will leave Facebook and it might contain something or other. Uh, no, no, this is just the internet. This is how internet works. If you click a link, you go to a different site. This is like natural. Why are you warning me again? Yeah. Oh, now it makes sense, right? Now it suddenly makes sense because, you know, we're not using the internet, we're using, uh, we're using Facebook. So this is uh, a quote I found somewhere, uh, which I decided to modify just a little bit to make it more on topic. And this is my version, right? Thousands of engineers through, through decades worked hard to make the internet not have central points of failure just for us to fuck it up, right? This is the internet, uh, Anno Domini 2016. It has a shitload of choke points at the same time, right? If one of those things goes down, your website goes down or whatever you're using goes down. That doesn't sound like a very good idea. So perhaps we should <coughs> do something about the application layer. Because it, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the OSI model, blah, 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 et cetera, right? Inter internet is like Shrek, right? Sh it, has, it has layers, right? So you have, you have, I don't know, the physical layer and then some the lo local layer and then something layer and then something layer and then at some point you have the application layer which is, the, for example, HTTP. So what happened was that people, when the, when people, when the internet, or those, those thousands of engineers, when they were thinking of how internet should work, uh, they thought, okay, so we have all those layers and they all should kind of be able to, so we should be able to replace the technologies used there. So instead of ethernet, we should be able to, sorry, to use a uh, token ring, right? Or instead of Ethernet, uh, we should be able to use the you know, Wi-Fi, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, right? And they're all pretty much decentralized. You can connect them in any way, shape, or form you want, more or less, right? And then things work, right? You, you can, you know, regarding of the um, technology used, you will find different routes to a host if they exist, right? In application layer, unfortunately, what we're building is a nice centralized, uh, you know, set of centralized services on top of a decentralized infrastructure. What a wonderful idea. So a lot of people put a lot of thought into that and now, uh, you know, we're kind of not, not using it. And the problem is that the engineers decided that the application layer should not be explicitly 
you know, decentralized, because why, right? You know, application layer is when, where the innovation happens, so people should be able to do whatever they want. The problem is that now it's not people, it's, it's large behemoths like Facebook or Google, and they are doing whatever they want in the application layer, because that's the layer they can play with, right? So my first point <laughs> I'm, I'm going to wait in this, uh, make in this part is that private service is not public infrastructure. This might be obvious or this might be not obvious but if you look at if you look at how facebook is being used right now for example right with with facebook login to a sh shit ton of sites this is basic this has be, uh, basically become an, in, an infra infrastructure right this is no longer just a service somewhere a lot of things rely on this particular private service which means that this particular private service has a lot of control over a lot of things and has a lot of leverage over a lot of things and a lot of, I don't know, users, uh, a lot of services and also uh, to a growing extent laws, right? Facebook has a very strong lobbying department and, and they do lobby. And they can say, you know, millions of users, has, uh, users are using our service and then, um, uh, and then if you do this, we will not be able to provide the service, which is a nice way, of basically, of saying, oh, what a nice internet you, you have here. It would be a shame if something bad happened to it, right? This is a very nice way of saying that, but, but this is basically what they're saying if you go to a, a public hearing with them. So um, this, is also, this is also interesting because what, what comp companies like Facebook, I'm going to use this example still, uh, do is that they, you know, when, th when it's convenient to them, they claim, oh no, we're just a private company, we have no way of influencing government decisions and blah, blah, blah. And then they go to a public meeting or, 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 or uh, you know, a uh, lobbying meeting and then they try to do just, just that. And what I have a problem with, amongst many, many other things, is that they claim that, oh, you know, we are trying to work with government so that we can bring uh, f the internet, right, the Facebook, to more users. This is actually what they say, right? And work with government here, uh, work with governments here means if Indian government asks us to shut down a uh, page or a fan page or whatever, we will do that so that other um, Indian uh, users can still use Facebook. Because otherwise, if we do not do this, then uh, then uh, Indian government will just block us on the uh, you know on the infrastructure right and then no user in uh, in India will be able to use Facebook now I have a problem with that because this is basically their own decision right if uh, the protocol if the if the Facebook protocol was decentralized if there are many places many service providers that can do the same service then it would be harder to block that, right? Can you block XMPP? How do you block a protocol, right? This is not an easy task, right? Especially if, you're, uh, if we're talking about an encrypted protocol, especially if we're talking about a protocol that does not have central points, et cetera, et cetera, right? So when I hear, when I hear Facebook saying, uh, saying, oh, you know, those bad governments, but we have to work with them, et cetera, no, 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 you don't. No, you don't. Open up your protocol and then see what happens, right? Let's, let's play with this. So, uh, we have the technology, right? We can, we can rebuild him. We can, we can decentralize the application layer. And there are many, many um, projects that are trying to do this. I'm not going to go through, you know, diaspora, frantic, all of that. But we have to kind of stop being dumb about that. And what I mean by this, I will, I will tell you in a minute. The bottom line is we need compatibility and interoperability. So, quiz time. How many decentralized free software social network protocols uh, you can find on Wikipedia? Uh, think about it for a moment. And we'll start voting because, you know, movement is good for your health. Uh, who says it's less than 10? Okay. Who says it's between 11 and 25? Nice. Who says it's between 26 uh, and 50? Okay. Who says it's more than 50? Well done. <laughs> Welcome to the brave new world of 52 incompatible <laughs> social network protocols, right? Do you see what I, what I was getting at with the dumb part, right? This is not particularly smart. 
Because, you know, with the social network, you kind of have to be able to talk with somebody, right? It's, it's basically, it's a simple equation, right? If you have a shit ton of incompatible protocols, you will be forever alone in your social network. It will not be very social, right? This is the problem. <clears throat> uh, so, if there are any people here who work with free open source decentralized social networks, I'm also kind of one of them, please try to bring some compatibility into the game. There was a wonderful thread on W3C mailing list about Libra social protocols, um, where some person, which was me, asked, okay, so why don't we kind of try to work to build compatibility between those networks? Because it kind of doesn't make sense to have 52 incompatible, etc., right? And then there was 300 emails of, of uh, basically, uh, my network is the special snowflake and, uh, and we c there's no way to bring compatibility. Yes, there is. It's basically title, date, author, body. And then comments, which are title, date, author, body. It's, it's a simple data structure, right? There you, we have JSON, we have XML. You can use SOAP for this if you really want to, right? There are many ways we can s s send those four, four data out between different hosts, right? And we can, we can do all, all magical uh, stuff. The problem is we have to agree that you know no social no, no social network is the special snowflake, right? No no developer is the special snowflake, and I'm not saying that we should sit down and suddenly develop a single standard because XKCD standards probably you've seen it right, <clears throat> because 14 different standards. Let's build a new one. 15 different standards. Uh, but what I, I'm saying is, how about, you know, if you have a special Snowflake social network, that's wonderful, keep it up, I mean, pat pat. Uh, but how about you build a compatibility layer with one other, just one other, right? just one. Just pick one other social free software, decentralized social network, and try to be compatible with that one, right? And let's see what happens, because I'm guessing, you know, it will kind of fall into place and the bad protocols will just die but people will start maybe using it because they will not, not no longer be forever alone in those social networks uh, if you want to get funky this is another step let's say you could look at twister which is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh twitter equivalent let's let's call it uh, it's bringing the power of BitTorrent and blockchain to well, no, not package management, damn it. Um, uh, to, to Twitter like uh, uh, social net, to microblogging, basically. Uh, but it's very experimental and very beta. Yeah, there are literally thousands of users, so you know you're going to be forever alone in a peer to peer way. Uh, Twister Netco, I'm there. Um, I'm probably one of the very few people that are actually doing anything there. Uh, but please join, have a look, and, and perhaps uh, help develop. Uh, a compatibility layer with anything else. <clears throat> so, moving on. Um, if those names, uh, do those names tell you anything? Is it, is it okay, uh, uh, we have one person, okay. So, you know what SSL is, right? And you know what certificate authority is, right? And you know that you probably in your browser you have about 170 different certificate, author, uh, certificate authority certific root certificates <laughs> that allow you or your browser to verify, yes, this is a, a HTTPS connection that is secure and safe and wonderful and whatnot, right? Uh, it's very important for those, for those organizations to be transparent. Right? They're basically, uh, they're basically the, 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 the root, uh, I don't even know, the root of authority and security, whatever, on the internet. Anything that goes through SSL or TLS, uh, either is a uh, own certificate authority, but that's beside the point. But if it's user-facing, it's using a certificate that is issued by one of those organizations. And then about half a year ago, or more even, I'm sorry, even more, uh, the, uh, Vosign, uh, which is a Chinese company, uh, bought Startcom, which ostensibly is an Israeli company, and nobody knew. Nobody noticed. There was no official kind of, you know, oh, hi, by the way, it's, you know, the Chinese are now controlling this certificate authority, right? Their certificates are cross-signed. Basically, they merged. But the problem is that, you know, if you want to, for example, if, let's say, I would say that it probably is safe to assume that 
most certificate authorities in China have some ties to the government. Right? I'll be very like sensible here and I'll just say some. Uh, so some people are removing those uh, certificate authority root certs from their browsers, from, the, from their systems, because, you know, if you're a CA, you can basically hijack any connection, right? You can create a certificate for any connection. We know this, uh, well, we know this because we know how it works, but in practice it was shown by DigiNotar uh, fuck up, where DigiNotar lost their keys. Now they don't exist, right? But they lost their, key, their keys and there were certificates in the wild issued by those, through those keys for uh, for Google.com or Facebook.com or whatever, right? Not a good situation. <clears throat> so, if somebody's trying to keep track of this, suddenly they can't. Well, they can, but they get to know about this half a year later after there's, uh, there's literally a whistleblower saying, by the way, this is what happened half a year ago, right? Of course, Vosain is now suing the guy, because why not, right? So, there, there might be a problem with this idea that, you know, whichever C-A-U-R, you can issue things for anything. But wait, there's more. So you know Let's Encrypt, right? Have you heard about Let's Encrypt? So getting certificates is, is boring and costly. Let's create a thing where you can get them automatically. So Start, Startcom, this Startcom, uh, decided to create Start Encrypt, right? Where you can, I don't, I don't know why this made sense for them. So the problem is they, they wrote their own client, they, you know, they, everything was fine. The problem was that the way it works is uh, the client said, it goes to the server, to the start encrypt server and says, oh, hi, I'd like a certificate for this particular domain. And the server says, okay, place this file in a particular, a particular place of the file system of the domain name, right? So it's accessible in a very particular place of the, uh, um, of the domain name. So example.com slash some particular file name, right? The problem was, and, and you know, this is important because you have to know, you know, the, the Start Encrypt server has to verify, yes, this file has been placed there where no other person than an admin has access to. The problem was that this location, this, you know, important location, basically was chosen by, it was chosen by the client, right? The client said, oh, I'd like a certificate for this domain name here. By the way, the file will be in this location, right? Which, is, which means a malicious client could specify a path to any file on the server. Anybody ever used Dropbox? This is not a joke. <laughs> they've, got, they've gotten certificates issued for Dropbox, and they were valid. For Google, and they were valid. And for other things also. <clears throat> okay, that's, uh, that's fun. Um, let's, let's move on, all right? So, <laughs> this, this, this gets better. Not only can you provide the file name to which uh, this, you know, this, this server will look for the secret, secret file, the server will follow redirects, right? Including redirects outside of the domain. I, I, I don't have enough faces and enough palms for this. Um, so <laughs> that's moving on from CAs, right? Exclusive provider of internet access in Syria is the state-run Syrian telecommunications establishment. What could possibly go wrong, right? The, this name, this name tells you everything. The systematic way, Syria dis disappeared from the internet a couple of times, right? And Cloudflare at some point did a investigation of how that hap might have happened. Because some people were claiming, no, 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 the, the cable got caught by an anchor or, or a bomb or whatever. Well, the problem was that systemic way, systematic way in which routes were withdrawn, so like, boom, this route is gone, this route is gone, etc., etc., right? Does support that there were updates in router configurations in Syria, not a single cable being cut. Because if there was a say, single cable being cut and Syria basically has a single cable out, then kind of everything would just go dark immediately, right? So this is centralization on the physical level, right? On th this is basically, there is one point where everything goes through. So <laughs> we kind of have to do something about that, right? Uh, the SSL is, is, is bad. I mean, th th there is no easy way to fix it. There is no easy way to, to, to replace it, basically all browser vendors would have to agree on something and they won't. Uh, starting Let's Encrypt was already hard. Uh, but there are things that people are trying to do. So for example, Monkey Sphere. Anybody heard about Monkey Sphere? Web of Trust for SSL. 
as and open PGP based for that, right? So you can use your PGP keys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? This works for SSL. This works works for SSH. No single browser supports it unless you have a particular extension to Firefox. Of course, there is no extension to, for, for Chrome, because why would there be? Uh, so, you know, it, it's a good idea. Unfortunately, it's unsupported, and it would be a good idea to try to kind of bring it to uh, to being supported. This is this is one of the ways to, to fix it. Uh, CA cert, which is unfortunately dying, I believe. Yeah, it was a good idea. It was a web of trust just for SSL, not PGP based, but just SSL based basically. Uh, but unfortunately, it it kind of fizzled. It, it it never got the support again. Their root certificate never got introduced into any browser, and that means that well, they cannot issue valid certifi certificates. Uh, or we could move to a protocol with uh, with en uh, encryption baked in. Uh, like Tor hidden services, like I2P or whatever else, we could uh, we could find out, right? But again, this is a move we we would have to kind of make, right? There is no right answer, by the way, right? I, I don't have the medicine; I only have the disease in front of me. So this, this, these are things we should think about. So then we have DNS, again, a centralized system that ends in a single root uh, root authority uh, owned by a corporation in the United States. Hmm, I, I, I see a pattern here. Uh, again, what could be done about DNS? We could have alternative routes. There were a couple of uh, tries. There was, uh, there was uh, I don't remember the name right now, but there was Telecomics, for example, who had alternative routes. There are many alternative routes. If you search for alternative routes, uh, alternative DNS routes, you will find a couple of them. Uh, but again, they're not used by default by any service provider. So most users don't even know about uh, you know that they exist. There is Namecoin because of, of course everything is better if you slap blockchain on it. Uh, it is an interesting it is an interesting idea, right? The idea is basically that instead of transferring Bitcoin, the the blockchain is used for transferring names, right? Domain names, and then the DNS servers look at the blockchain and say, oh. Oh, you want uh, this domain name? This is the IP, right? Or, or this is the way you, you get to the to the IP, and this is uh, the the ownership of the domain name is in the in the blockchain. Of course, the problem is that uh, the problem, or not a problem, is that uh, there is no way to revoke a, uh, for example, domain squatted domain, right? If somebody registers, I don't know, uh, MRM CD. Uh, dot whatever in Namecoin right now, or dot name because it has to, it has its own um, TLD uh, in dot name in in there. Nobody else will be able to take it from them, right? So on one hand, it's a good idea. It, it sounds sane because oh, that's great. No government can do anything about that. On the other hand, you they already get a lot of domain squatters, right? There's a lot of people that just randomly get random domains that can be potentially interesting. And there's nothing you can do about that, right? Not that you can do anything about that in the real DNS world, right? But still, there are other addressing schemes like uh, hidden services or I2P, IPFS. Uh, there are things that are happening here. But again, there is no easy, f easy fix, right? This is what we get. We have the DNS. Now we have to kind of try to figure out what to do with that and, and you know, either try to fix it or just drop it and move move to something else. I think they move to something else is more interesting, but hey, that's just me. Uh, the physical layer, right? You have internet exchange points, like in Syria, like in Egypt, right? When the when Hosni Mubarak decided, oh, those internets are, you know, um, something's wrong with the internet. Could you turn it on, uh, off and on again, right? Uh, they could do this in Egypt because they had a si literally s single server room with the routers. So a guy in boots just went through the server room like, fump, 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 just uh, cut the breakers, right? Cut the electricity. Uh, and uh, in Poland, we have, I think, four exchange points. This doesn't sound like a very decentralized way of doing things, right? Uh, but there are there are uh, um, ideas, right? There are radio links which you can then try to slap your own routing on. And there is something called FF, uh, FFDN. I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce the full name because it's French. Um, it's probably French, French something something. Uh, 
they're amazing guys, by the way. They're amazing, and they're creating a physical, uh, basically a set. It's, it's about 40 small local ISPs in France that peer with each other, which means that basically one third of France right now has this separate physical uh, interconnection. Right? They, they of course uh, provide internet, uh, provide the access to the regular internet, right? But in case any link goes down, every of those, every single uh, one of those ISPs can go through any other ISP he's peer peered with, right? Without going to the backbone or whatever, right? This is this is a very interesting project, and I think I hope it'll kind of. Uh, Get more, get more traction. I love the idea of decentralizing not only in physical layer but also in organizational layer. Right? These are different organizations. They are different kind of companies. Ah, and there we have Cloudflare, CloudFront, Google Shield, and all those uh, DDoS protection schemes. Right? What this means is that that's great. You have the let's say the centralized physical layer. You have the centralized DNS. Well, no, you don't because if you're using them, your DNS has to go through them. Uh, you have all those wonderful things, and then everything goes through a single company. Great. This is um, this is great. Let's protect from DDoS by putting everything in a single basket in case you know they just want to pull the plug. Let's make it easy for easier for them. Uh, and then there's I think a B got there accidentally. I'm sorry. It should be Internet Org, of course. Um, but uh, but um, so Facebook basically Facebook now tries to build Internet in Africa. I don't know if you're aware of that and other third world nations or places. Uh, the the have you heard about the SpaceX failed launch lately? Like the, I think it was yesterday or the day before. That was one of their sa satellites. Right. This was this was one of the satellites that was supposed to provide internet. Oops, sorry, Facebook to Africa. Because of course, the way this works is that Facebook you get you get for free. Everything else you have to pay through the nose. Right. So hey, great. Uh, zero rating is is a wonderful idea. Why not? Right. And of course, if Facebook controls your physical connection, that means that they can bring their uh, you know high quality censorship to internet near you. Uh, Things that got banned from Facebook, uh, it's, for example, a picture of a cat, or rather, a picture of a lady with, uh, with a kitten pressed against her, uh, her face. Now, uh, the problem was that <laughs> this is Nina Paley, so this is a, an artist that does not take shit from Facebook. Uh, and she then wrote a nice blog post about this. Now, can you guess why a picture of a face with a cat Pressing against that face got banned from Facebook. Ah, yes, yes. It kind of is because of the picture. Yes, it's because of peculiarity of the English language. Or, as as apparently uh, somebody commented under this picture, what a nice pussy you have. Boom, right? Off of Facebook for three days, which for a uh, graphic designer uh, for whom uh, this is basically a, 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 the basic tool, this was not a very good thing, right? But could she just drop Facebook? Of course not, right? Of course not. So let's consider the following. This is the problem, right? This is centralization on the social level, let's say. Right? It's great that we have all those decentralized social networks. It doesn't really help that much because there's a thing called the network effect. Right? The more people use a given telecommunication solution, again, I'm sorry, this might be obvious, but this is not obvious to many, many people, unfortunately. The more, well, yes. The more people use a given telecommunication solution, the more inclined other people will be to use it, right? And this means the stronger tie-in for its users. That's why Nina Pele could not just drop Facebook, okay? because all of the, her prospective clients, customers are there. Um, but then there's uh, a report of workshop on privacy, consumers, competition, and big data uh, by EDPS, which is the European Data Protection something. Uh, this even works with this acronym. Uh, the di digital economy has seen rapid change and consolidation as a result of factors such as network effects, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, more, uh, more, uh, more um, you know, uh, uh, docu-speak, docu let's call it, right? But 
actually the politicians are starting to notice. This is interesting. This, this, has, happened, uh, this has happened two years ago, right? Somebody is noticing a problem. This is interesting. Uh, this is from a nice article about the new news feed. This is like years ago, right? Can anybody tell me what is the problem with this statement? Why, why we might, why some might find it problematic? Well, if your only way of protesting against company X is use more of company X's services, something's wrong, right? Users were protesting against Facebook by using Facebook groups. And this is, I mean, there are ways to, to do it in a way which is, uh, let's, say, let's say, subversive. This is not. This was not subversive. This was not using their own weapons against them. This was, I have no other place to go to like, vent my frustration. Uh, so this is what I said earlier, right? A social network does not make any sense if there is nobody to network with. Uh, and users will not just go from one social network to the other because then you have, oh my God, what do I do with all those pictures? Should I, how do I get those pictures out, right? And put them in my new wonderful social networks. Let's, let's not even go into the problem of my friend's family and their dog. Ah, uh, so we have to emancipate user data, right? We have to find a way to get, to make it possible for users to move between social networks uh, or, ser or any other kind of service with their data, right? It kind of, I don't know why, why would, would we have to say this out loud. This is amazing that we have to say this out loud, but apparently this is not obvious in 2016, right? That you can change the service provider and take your data with, it's your data. Well, Facebook will claim it's their uh, trade uh, secrets uh, as they did in a uh, lawsuit a couple of years ago, but hey, right? I will still claim it's, it's your data. So um, this is a nice quote. So many smart political cho choices are embedded in the core of internet architecture, right? The fact that it's decentralized means that it's harder to censor, for example, right? But there are, uh, there's an equal number of risks, network effects, data silos that technology just wasn't able to avoid. We shouldn't be stuck in refighting those lost, lost battles, but instead commit to using political process to address them. There's one thing I don't agree with in this, uh, in this uh, quote, and that is, uh, we shouldn't be stuck refighting those lost battles. Right? I agree with that we should commit to the political process, but basically my reaction is, why not both? Right? I think we should basically be doing both. First of all, build the, the, the infrastructure, build the services like Diaspora Friendica or whatever. Right? Make them compatible, make them ready for the users, make them work. Right? But on the other hand, yes, we do have to go and start explaining to politicians that something is not okay, right, with the internet. There seems to be, the internet seems to be a little bit sick, and we do need this coronary bypass uh, at its heart, right? So, a couple of things. First of all, export, right? You have your data in a, in a silo, you have your data in a walled garden, you have your data in a, uh, in, a, in a service, right? You should be able to export this data in some way. Right? It shouldn't be like, oh, I have to click through 2,000 images right now. I'm sure I'm going to do this, right? No, you have to be able to just click and download all of this stuff, even if it's a lot, right? We will find a way to, to store this lot of data. The problem is that we need to first have the possibility to do this. And of course, uh, you know, you can go and say, Facebook, give me all, your, uh, all the data, and they will send you a nice um, binder of paper, or rather, several binders of paper, but that's not really useful. Uh, import. Hey, that's great. You have your data on your hard drive. What do you do with this? It's in a different format that the other social network uses. Good luck with that, right? And then interoperability. So that social networks, and I'm not saying just the free software social networks, social networks sh should interop with each other. Why the hell am I able to move my SIM card, uh, to move my uh, mobile provider or whatever, I'm sorry, mobile service between providers and keep the number, and I'm not able to do this with social networks. How, how does it work? It's a much simpler service, right? The, 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 the mobile thing is actually more complicated than a social network. Again, title, date, author, body. That's the four like, kinds of data that goes, goes through. If you want to be fancy, you then add, I don't know who can see this, you know, visibility, etc. I'm sure we can sort this out, right? Have you ever tried to understand how GSM works? Holy cow. I mean, this, this, this 
like forced my brain through my ears and then back in. Yes, yes, that's what I'm getting at. I mean, yes, uh, <laughs> apparently the internet won a game or something. Uh, yes, that's what I'm getting at, that technical solutions themselves will not fix that, right? Uh, building uh, building the, c the centralized social, uh, free, so uh, free software social networks is important and we should continue doing that, but I agree with, 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 uh, with uh, not this guy, this guy, uh, this guy, that we also need to start pressing upon politicians that, hey, you should do something about that. And of course, the companies will say, oh, you know, this will destroy the internet and this will destroy innovation on the internet, etc., etc. I actually believe it's otherwise. And if you talk to the economists and try to you know, let them see this, okay, so how about we look at this not as a single market of service providers, but how about we look at this as different markets because they're not compatible you know you, there's no flow of users b between them you can you, you you can have three different social network accounts but it's not a, really a competition right and then suddenly economists say oh this is interesting yes we should do something about that and then they don't do anything but here's the good part so that's a proposal for regulation of the european parliament and blah 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 and something or other again two years ago uh Data, uh, the data subject is entitled, data subject being the user, uh, is entitled to receive personal data concerning him or her that he or she has provided to a controller, which is the social network, for example, right? This is the first step. This was a proposal, this never you know, got any traction. But again, apparently they start to notice, right? Maybe we should put a little bit more pressure on the, on the lobbying part, on the, on the part where we go to politicians, call them, etc., and explain, Guys, we really need this, right? We need network neutrality with zero rating band. We need uh, data portability, we need data interoperability, we need all of this. Because otherwise, we'll, we're building walled gardens that will not communicate with each other at some point, right? This is the problem. Uh, there is no easy solution. So keep calm, decentralized, federate, self-host, and lobby, apparently. Thank you very much. Questions, answers. Answer or question? Oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, go, go for it. No, 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 uh, no. <laughs> Have you seen Samba? You know the the Samba, the the file sharing on Windows thing. Yeah, yeah they they opened the standard, and still nobody is able to kind of fully implement it because it's just or DocX or whatever. But yes, so um, it's gonna be hard as hell. It's gonna be hard as hell because basically the business model of Facebook. Uh, of Twitter is we're not we're not letting them out, right? Twitter at some point uh, until a uh, until some point Twitter had RSS feeds for every single user and for every single hashtag, which was wonderful because I could follow my friends on Twitter. Sorry, did I say Facebook? Twitter. Uh, I could f follow my friends on Twitter without being on Twitter. Right? I could just follow a an RSS link. We again we have the technology. It's simple. But then Twitter decided that, oh, you know what, we're cutting this feature, nobody is using that. I don't think that was why they cut that. I think that, that was, uh, they cut that because it was easier to get the data, it was easier to use it without becoming the user and without jumping into the world garden. So they base their business models on, on this thing not existing, right? Uh, just as telecom companies were basing their business models and still are on network neutrality not existing. Thankfully, you know, network neutrality got some traction and some things got worked through. Hopefully this will work for, for, for social networks at some point also, but this will require a lot of pressure and these are years and years and years of work, right? But eventually, I mean, eventually this is where we have to get to, right? This is the, 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 the point where we have to get to, right? Yeah, uh, okay.
So what stops, what stops people from setting up a new Facebook with the better user? In who is, well, by the way, who is on Facebook from here, like from this group? OK. Who of you is happy with Facebook interface? Doom, doom, doom. So here's, here's the question. What is stopping new companies from setting up better Facebooks with, I don't know, easier, uh, easier to use UIs or whatever? The fact that everybody is on Facebook, right? So the, the idea here is that if you open the API, if you open the data, I mean, not entirely, right? But you will be able to provide the service while staying compatible with the, with the with other social networks, right? This means that, for example, uh, some company will be able to provide the service with a better search functionality or what, whatever, right? If users wanted to pay, th th that's great. Some some so, for example, right now, in the discussion about privacy, that's like a, another huge problem. But in discussion about privacy, you get large companies saying, oh, you know, you know this, this is a choice. You can pay with money or you can pay with your privacy, you know, to, to targeted ads, etc., etc." The problem is you, you really can't pay with money. Has, ever, ever, has any one of you seen a search engine where you pay with money? This service does not exist, right? There is no service apart from Diaspora, which is tiny, right, compared to Facebook. It's still, I'm still, I'm, I'm there and I'm very happy, but but it's still tiny, right? Diaspora pods are, are supported by users, right? Users can pay developers or, or admins or whatever, and they become slowly, but it, hap it is happening that they're supported by users, right? So apparently people want to pay for this, not with their data, but with their money. The, question, the problem is that nobody can actually provide this service because everyone is there, right? You're the product, yes. There was a question here, I believe. Yeah. Have you ever heard about information transfer technique? No. Apparently, I should. Let's talk. Can you? It's an idea to, to have, uh, in, instead of having connections mm -hmm. between hosts, mm -hmm. that you edit your data and you connect to the host, and then you get the data or connect to the CDN. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's IPFS, for example. I'm not familiar with IPFS, but uh, and you don't, basically the, the information has a name. But doesn't have an address. But doesn't have an address, and you can get it from anywhere. So like, for example, in Syria, uh, mm -hmm. you can have people with Wi-Fi and across mm -hmm. the border, and it will just work. Basically. Yeah, so so IPFS is like that, right? It's, it's a content addressed. Um, file system, right? It addresses it by 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 a hashtag, uh, by hash tag, tag, hash. Yeah, yeah, let's talk. Yes. Nope. Okay. Into what? Interoperable. Thank you. I, I need a link. I need a link immediately. Okay. Uh, uh, can you send me an email before I forget? Thank you, madam. We have two users on Twister. Anybody else? There's silence, crickets. Nobody's interested. Thank God. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm I'm still available if anybody wants to talk. Let's decentralize the internet together. Thank you.